And now we're going to go up and we come to a T in the line, refrigerant splits. On our way from the liquid refrigerant up to the top evaporator, the high temp evaporator, we go to a liquid line solenoid valve. Liquid line solenoid valve job is to turn on and off the flow of liquid to the high temperature evaporator. The liquid line solenoid is controlled by a thermostat or cold control. If the temperature in the box is cold enough, the cold control or thermostat will shut off the liquid line solenoid valve and it will stop the flow of liquid. And no more refrigerating effect will take place in the high temperature evaporator. Later on, when the box warms up, the thermostat or cold control will energize the solenoid and flow of liquid will then be restored to the TEV and into that evaporator. Liquid line solenoid valve helps control the temperature of the high temperature evaporator by turning on and off the flow of liquid. Question? Does this show the temperature control? Is that what the control box is? It doesn't show it. it, doesn't it show it's it. vague. Yeah. You're not going to show any electrical parts, so don't worry about it. Okay. We're only doing mechanical refrigeration. No so you're not going to show any electrical stuff. No crankcase heater, no fan wires, no high and low pressure controls because no electrical. No electrical. No motors. Okay. But if it's a refrigeration part, yeah, we will. Now, after we leave our liquid line solenoid valve and continue on our way to the higher temperature evaporator, we come to the famous thermostatic expansion valve. Now, a thermostatic expansion valve can be abbreviated TEV or TXV. Both are acceptable and appropriate. TEV or TXV. The refrigerant control determines how much high pressure liquid is turned into low pressure liquid and sent into the evaporator. Oh, it's also the, the uh, brain of the system. The evaporator receives this low pressure liquid. Heat is absorbed from the surrounding product into the evaporator. This heat causes the low pressure liquid to boil. We absorb the heat and turn all the low pressure liquid into a low pressure gas. We then leave the evaporator. As all the liquid is turned into gas, some of that gas increases in temperature a few degrees. This is called superheat. We superheat the vapor by adding more temperature to it. On the outlet of the high temperature evaporator is an EPR valve, evaporator pressure regulator. Yes? Are you going to talk about the equalizer? I'll get to it when I get to the second evaporator. But yes, I will. It's one of your parts you can use. The evaporator pressure regulator, its job is to maintain and force a higher pressure in that evaporator to drive the temperature up. That EPR valve is what creates the second temperature so we can operate two different systems with two different temperatures. Without the EPR valve, we have two coils at the exact same temperature. We don't want that. The EPR valve is a pressure regulator and backs refrigerant pressure up and so the pressure goes over a predetermined spring temperature range. That's it. EPR valves are field adjustable. There's a spring you can crank down on them. Maintains a back pressure to maintain a higher temperature. Now you're going to hear these definitions multiple times in the next two weeks. You are going to get them always a little bit differently. You said it's a pressure regulator until the pressure uh, until the, until the pressure in the evaporator and temperature, right? Not temperature. Just pressure. Just the pressure overcomes the spring setting right. and the refrigerant gets to leave. Yeah, I thought I heard you say temperature as well. It creates a higher temperature. Well, it does but the valve only works on pressure. It's a pressure operated right. valve. But when you have a higher pressure, you yeah, create a higher temperature. Right. But the valve doesn't work on the right. temperature. Okay. It just works on the pressure.
There is a very interesting tube on both of those systems. It connects the thermostatic expansion valve to the outlet of the evaporator. Now this is without a doubt the single most difficult part to get people to remember because of the name. The tube is called an external equalizer tube. It transmits a pressure signal from the outlet of the evaporator back to the thermostatic expansion valve to compensate for high internal pressure drop of that evaporator. It transmits a pressure signal. The equalizer tube equalizes nothing. It equalizes nothing. It transmits a pressure signal from the outlet of the evaporator back to the expansion valve to help compensate for any pressure drop in the evaporator. You go through all these tubes and all these bends, this creates friction. And between the inlet and outlet of the pressure drop maybe three or four pounds to the evaporator. Now, thermostatic expansion valves, you will learn, work on low side pressure and the temperature of the suction line on the outlet of the evaporator. If the low side pressure on the outlet is different than the low side pressure on the inlet, it will throw the valve off and the valve will starve the evaporator. And efficiency will go down. So, to compensate on large evaporator coils, we use an external equalizing tube. It's a copper tube. Transmits a pressure signal from the outlet of the evaporator back to the valve. Nothing ever goes through the tube. It's a signal transmitting tube only. Refrigerant will back up into it, but it can't get out of the tube. It just transmits a pressure signal. That is the most difficult part because people see the words equalizer and go, oh, equalizer, I know what it does, it equalizes nothing. It's a pressure transmitting tube. External equalizing tube is a part. It compensates for pressure drop on large evaporators and it's hooked up from the thermostat expansion valve to the outlet of the evaporator. How do I tell if I have a thermostat expansion valve with an internal or external equalized? If it's got three tubes, if it's got three connection points, it's externally equalized. If it's got two connection points, it's internally equalized. And all thermostat expansion valves have bulbs.